Let's move over some D3 football. We'll start things off. Had Trey earlier on the show, but uh, we got to talk about this Oshkosh uh, game, Jimmy. Oshkosh, Platteville, number 19 at number 6. Talk to me about this one, dude. The Titans in a very similar spot as the Blue Devils in that they control their destiny. If they win out, they've got a lot of football to be played, but obviously you've got a meeting between those two schools. They've got River Falls the last week. There's still some big games to be had, but talk about this win over Platteville for the Titans. Yeah, so Oshkosh just continues to uh, notch in uh, victories against ranked opponents, being their fourth win of the year against the top 25 team. Um, another playoff resume builder against a team who many believe was the favorite in the WIAC, but as we know, the WIAC has been an absolute gauntlet this year, and there is no one really knows who the favorite is, quite honestly. And, yeah. uh, I mean, man, oh, man, just a heck of a win against a great program in Platteville. Uh, uh, scoring 24 points again against them is a huge accomplishment, and obviously holding them to 17 get the victory is big as well. Uh, I mean, man, oh man, I what what you'll laugh, but when I think of Oshkosh being these ranked teams, it's like you know that meme. It's like the Grim Reaper. And he's like knocking on the door. Yes, and it's like, like a picture. That, that's what Oshkosh is doing to these ranked teams all year long, and look for them to continue to do that. And it's funny because the first episode of the season, I picked Oshkosh to lose, and they took that personally, man. They just keep winning football games. <laughs> I tell you what, I don't know if they're too worried about what I was saying, but I feel like the nation as a whole kind of had a similar opinion as me. Uh, coming to that Wheaton game, and they just came out fire, and they haven't looked back. So props to Oshkosh. No, 100%. And this one starts off uh, kind of rather slowly. You see the field goal here that ties things up at three in the first, but Platteville would strike first when it comes to touchdowns, and uh, they went to the half leading 10-3. And this is a Platteville defense that I know we've talked about a lot. You see a big takeaway right there for the Titans. But a Platteville defense we've talked about a lot. And even though they do lose some big-time pieces, uh, Justin Blazy last year being obviously the biggest one right there. Uh, by the way, how about that? You get the turnover and then you cough it up on just the uh, the ensuing couple plays there, which is ridiculous. That kind of describes this game, I think, in a, in a nutshell. And that would be the first score for Platteville off of the turnover. But... Um, for me, we've talked so much about this defense for Platteville, and what we've seen is that the offense has exceeded a lot of expectations. And now having a, a great defense does help with that, kind of like an interception right there through the air. Oshkosh struggling early with some of those red zone chances of turning the ball over and kind of those drives just not being able to finish in that area. But uh, again, give credit to Platteville. Like you said, this is not the first time they've done it. Probably won't be the last. The Wyatt continues to cannibalize each other. Are we only going to get one Wyatt team in the playoff? I don't know about that, but it's definitely uh, – <laughs> we're definitely eating each other alive. DC or whatever, if you will. And uh, I, I believe that's true. I mean, there's just top to bottom. There's team – even you know, players have been really competitive. This year, Steven's points been a lot better. Um, you know, obviously, Stout, the Blue Devils, have been uh, surprising a lot of people as well. So, the Wax is uh, anyone's game right now. It does feel like there's a lot more parity in the league this year maybe than some had expected. Lacrosse seemed like the pretty heavy favorite with Whitewater behind them, and obviously River Falls did get a lot of love in the preseason. How about this touchdown, by the way? I thought this was in two times speed the first time I watched that. <laughs> that was outrageous, just up and down the sideline right there. But um, we've had a couple of teams, obviously you guys over there and Stout being one of them, Platteville being another. And I mean, Oshkosh, it, throw them right in that mix, that – yeah, we knew we were going to be quality opponents, but we didn't think they would be competing for a WAC title. Like These are just not things maybe that we thought about in the preseason. Now, obviously, you guys in that locker room over there had all the confidence in that squad. I'm talking on the outside looking in. Uh, this is a league that has seen so much more parity than uh, maybe we expected, and there's the man himself, Tetzlaff, bringing that one in as he breaks the they record. Play right. But that's, that's uh, what they call him, right? We can, we can move forward a little bit. Let's talk about... Your Blue Devils, my friend. Number 11, River Falls. They come into town to take on Stout. This one goes all the way. Just can't get decided in regulation. Goes into overtime. A really tough finish. 40-37, to 37, River Falls takes this one over the Blue, Blue Devils. Yeah, it's a tough one, man. In my notes here, I just have, like, sad face emoji. <laughs> and, like, man, like, these the, – the guys battled so hard, man. You know, it, it just – it's a testament to the coaching staff, too. Like, you know, we started 0-1, and, and we could have just thrown in the towel, and it did not go that way. We ripped off four in a row, including a couple of huge wins, one being obviously against Whitewater. And then you have River Falls on the ropes, um, obviously without Baja. But, um, you know, River yeah. Falls is a great team, and we went on there and competed, man. We had them on the ropes. We just couldn't finish. Um, credit them for fighting and battling, man, all the way. But, uh, yeah, they got uh, lacrosse next week. This week, I should say. And then we have Eau Claire for homecoming. 
Yep. So uh, on, the, on the next one, like Richie said, you know, we're always thinking what's next. It's never like we're never focusing on the past. It's always what can we do right now? Yeah, and that was, I think, obviously the, the biggest takeaway from this game is, uh, you know, the change under center for that River Falls attack. And you saw a pretty much almost even split between uh, Riley Warzynski and Kate Fitzgerald had 24 and 23 attempts, respectively. What did you see from those two under center, obviously being able to watch that game up close and personal, my man, being right yeah. there? Uh, what did yeah. you see from that group under center, and, and what does that mean for this Falcon squad? Uh, I would say River Falls does not have a shortage at quarterback. Uh, as some, <laughs> everyone, was, everyone was talking about, oh, no Baja, no Baja. Man, oh, man. River Falls has a great quarterback room. Their, those kids are all athletes. Um, obviously, you saw Fitzgerald have a heck of a game. Uh, now, it started off a little slow. You know, you had to adjust, you know, get used to the system a little bit, and then they were rolling for a while. They, they did score on defense. Uh, we had a pretty critical turnover uh, in the game. But, you know, like we say, next play. You know, you know, we kept fighting, had a field goal at the end of regulation, a really long one, couldn't get it in through the yep. uprights. But uh, Coolio has been an absolute stud for us all year. He actually oh, cool. is the school record, he's the school record holder for kicking. Now, so Yeah, and you see on the pretty, film pretty here as we, as we roll it, River Falls turns that one over in the red zone. That was a really key moment of this game. I mean, 13-6, to six, they're driving down to score. They cough it up. You guys go the other way, flip the field position, and then defense comes up with a big-time stop there on third and 14. And this one, we kind of mentioned it talking with Richie, which will go later on in the episode, but 27-6 to six at one point. Stout, absolutely rolling. And this offense, without Blaha, for River Falls, able to bounce back feels like a really important Factor, I guess, uh, intangible mm -hmm. for this team. There's the touchdown that made the largest lead of the game for you guys. I mean, what was the confidence level like on the road up about four scores? I think three, I mean, three scores. I mean, we were preparing to win the game. I mean, I don't think anyone was like surprised we were winning yep. on our side. It's just uh, a lot of people outside are probably like, whoa, what the hell's going on? And then obviously you saw Blue Falls come back, obviously. Um, man, we're. We're not going anywhere, man. We'll, we'll be here. So <laughs> I'm with you. Talk about the uh, the series in in overtime. I'm going to try and, and fast forward and bring it up to that. But you guys get them to, I believe it was a third and four in overtime and uh, are not able to stop them, which you had the field goal, right? You got the ball first, had a field goal in overtime. So they mm. need a touchdown to win or a field goal to keep things going. And uh, third and four, you guys unable to stop them. Quarterback runs it in from, I believe, like the two-yard line. Yeah, here it is right there, the game-winning yeah. score. Talk me through that that series. And, I mean, that that play right there, that third-down conversion probably sealed the deal. Yeah, you know, it's just one of those things where when you're just watching, you know, you can't really do a whole lot. Uh, but, you know, just kind of gut-wrenching. It's the only way I can really describe it as. Uh, you know, we we talked in the quarterback meeting today. It's like, okay, that sucked, but <laughs> yeah. like, let it go. Because, you know, we have yep. – Huge game this week. Claire's been having a pretty solid year. They're a lot better than they have been, and we have to uh, prepare like they're anybody else. You know, they're probably our biggest rival. I mean, them at River Falls, obviously, being that they're both right down the road. But, uh, yeah, just got to come out and fire away this week. I hear you there, my friend. Let's move over and talk about uh, a pretty big-time upset, that being in the pack, the PAC. Washington and Jefferson pick up a win against number 7 Grove City, 27-19. And this definitely shakes up the conference, but uh, also shakes up some playoff kind of implications when you look at um, the obvious answer of the automatic bid. But this is not a game I think that a lot of people expected to go this way. No, yeah. And this was going to be like a really good game because uh, on the Hanson ratings, it was like the top like rated game. So, you know, like, every week you go on the Hanson ratings, it's like the first one, there's like a game rating, if you will. This was the top game of the week. Okay. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people obviously picking Grove City to win, they're undefeated. But Washington Jefferson was not to be slept on by any means. Like, they were 5-1 and one heading into this one and handed Grove City their first loss of the season. Um, they still the deal with a touchdown with just about a minute to go to extend the lead from 1-8. to eight. So, obviously, you want to score a touchdown there. Don't, don't want to let them get a field goal and tie it, but uh, or take the lead. Maybe you don't even score. Yep. But uh, Grove City falling just short of the comeback. Uh, they have uh, Teal next week, and they should win that one. You know, obviously, if Grove City wins out, they'll still most likely get in with this expanded playoff. You know, if both of these teams end up winning out, they'll – both get in and Jefferson, Washington Jefferson will get the automatic bid if they win out, being that they'll be leading the conference. But uh, yeah. Grove City, like we said about Stout earlier, Grove City is not going anywhere. They made a pretty solid playoff run last year and they're looking to do that again. So. Yeah, and you're trying to prove right now, if you're the Wolverines over there, that was not a one-time deal. This was not a fluke. They're not the Carly Rae Jemsen of the D3 football <laughs> scene, if you will. Um, but, but I got to give the deep, pack more that's credit. That's a deep pull. Carly Rae Jemsen. <laughs> 
<laughs> was pretty number. good. So calm, you maybe. Wow, oh. I just I totally forgot she existed, bro. That's a, I feel like See? I'm in eighth grade again. Because right she now. was a one time deal. Yeah, uh, one trick pony. <laughs> yes. That's what Grove City is trying to prove they are not. And uh, I got to give more credit to the pack right now, Jimmy, the President's Athletic Conference. And uh, we've known that the top third of this conference has been playing some really good football, and that's something that I've, I've been aware of. But uh, the depth of this conference this year is some of the best. And the WAC is obviously still the front runner, but I would put this right up there probably in that second slot. You look right now, neither of those teams, even though that was kind of a game of the week caliber type of game, neither of those teams are leading the conference right now. Case Western Reserve 6-0 and right now. Then you go Washington and Jefferson at 6-1. and Carnegie That's Mellon at 5-1. and Grove City 5-1. and Westminster 5-1. and Like, there's a really good chunk. This top half of the conference now is playing really good ball. And the drop-off now, your bottom four to five teams still really struggling. But now you've got a lot more teams on that upper tier of kind of national just implications in playing. And you've got a lot of teams now that are looking to play some postseason ball. So the pack right now is definitely a, a really strong conference to be a part of. Yeah, and uh, I remember – in the summer, we kind of talked about like the strength of conferences, and we may have left them out, and that was uh, that was yeah. our mistake. That's for right. sure. We're here to rectify that. We might this yeah. this off season. It'll be fun to go through and actually do like a power ranking of like conference by conference. Would be like a fun a fun deal for each level of football. Man, I just hope we're still doing the show, man. After yeah. last week, after last week, I was getting worried we were going to be done after this year. <laughs> yeah, right. Come on. Oh, uh, you know I'm just busting your balls. So yep. Bust no. Balls. Life happens, but uh, this is this is far yeah. too much fun uh, doing this and talking ball to to just give up on it, my friend. But um, let's move over. Talk about another game here. We've got um, Utica taking on uh, Morrisville, twenty eight twenty six. The Mustangs, correct? I believe take this one. Yes, the Mustangs take this one. Talk about uh, you know why you had this one kind of highlighted. I mean, for there's one blatantly obvious <laughs> reason why is because. Utica caught a touchdown as time expired, yeah. down 28-20, and they did not convert the two-point conversion. Yeah. Like, you get this crazy touchdown that you think, oh, we start. you still got to get the two-point conversion. Like, you get, you're at the hard part, and now, oh, oh it's got to be so brutal. That is Because tough. the Empire the Empire 8 is a tough conference. You've got Corbin at the top. Man, oh, man, that's a tough one for you to call. I think that was their second loss of the year, too, so their playoff hopes are probably dwindling. But uh, they, uh, they'll they host Alfred next week, and they'll – more than likely get a victory, but any given Saturday, you know. So. 100%. Yeah, and you talk about conference kind of strength right now, the Empire 8 as it stands. You mentioned the obvious favorite in Cortland, 4-0 and right now in conference, 6-0 and overall. But then you go down the list, Brockport certainly right there, 5-1 and overall, 3-0 and in conference right now. Those two on a collision course to see who will end up taking this one. Brockport's defense and defensive secondary has been kind of a calling card of their team the last couple of years. After that, it does drop off. Uh, Morrisville right there in the hunt at 3-3 three and three overall. They're 2-1 and one in conference, so she could have some things you know go their way. Alfred, no pushover, but right now struggling inside of conference play. And it's, you know, the depth of the Empire 8 is is not necessarily there right now. Nonetheless, a, a really big win for that Morrisville squad. And uh, also worth noting, nobody melted on the black turf. <laughs> oh, man. Come on, dude. <laughs> Other quick hitters for us here. D three wise number five Harden Simmons they hold on versus McMurray McMurray four and one heading into this game I did not know that I, I not a team that we've talked about enough on this show seventeen to twelve Harden Simmons wins by five they eke by if you will after a uh, a really big time win last week over UMHB that felt like it could have been the time to strike obviously coming off a big emotional win sometimes there's a letdown that immediately follows yeah I mean you never want to have a letdown you just cannot have that. You keep going, though. We talk Wyack action, Whitewater. They do find some big offense. 66 nothing shutout of UW Stevens Point. And then one that I did want to talk about a little bit here, Johns Hopkins. They're tested in a 13-6 to win over Franklin and Marshall. The Blue Jays still sitting at 5-1. and one. Feels like a lot of people counting them out. Um, not saying they won't be a you know postseason-type team or even compete for the conference, but counting them out of the national picture. It does feel like that's been part of the conversation. And... There are some reasons why. We look at the stats from last year compared to this year. A year ago, this Johns Hopkins squad is averaging over 40 points a game. This year, it's down to 23. And offensively, you're down 140 yards per game. When you look at this offense for Johns Hopkins, they were dominating the run and passing attack last year and really the time of possession. Like That was something that they absolutely owned most opponents on. They were but, really uh, efficient in the run. 
I'm not sure too, if I remember. Their red zone touchdown percentage is like absurd. It was like 45 for 59 or something last year. That is ridiculous. That's a big reason why they were uh, a one seed heading into the playoff. But uh, the cliff note I had at the bottom of that, Jimmy, is that they're still winning games and they're finding yeah. ways to win games, maybe a little yeah. bit unconventionally compared to what they've done in the past. But the winning DNA is still very much in the water or in the air, I suppose, for the Blue Jays. Could be in the water, too. It could be both. <laughs> Finally, um, Catholic, take a close one over. Uh, is it Lie Coming? I have no idea. It's a tough one. That's a tough one. Yeah, I gotta I get. No- I gotta get right. That's on me. <laughs> I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be better. I gotta get right on the pronunciation. Uh, either way, it looked like a good ball game. 14-12. Catholic takes that one. That was kind of the the last cliff note for me as as far as some some big time games that stood out, my friend. Yeah, that I remember the the Mullenberg game was pretty crazy. There was like a hundred points in that game. It was like oh, fifty-eight yeah. to forty-two or something like that. It's pretty wild. Yeah. So is it? By the way, Mullenberg or Muhlenberg? I believe Mule. Muhlenberg. Pardon me. I believe. Me. Um, and you talk about Johns Hopkins. I think that's as far as, you know, that conference is concerned. Those two will meet to decide who ends up taking that automatic bid here in a couple of weeks. Yeah, more than likely so. Yeah. So awesome, my man. Appreciate you joining me again.